things. Um, this one's going to be about about surface development, and I will start from scratch here. I don't want to confuse anybody. Um, we don't. If we're just testing a uh, particular surface or making like a brick wall, or I don't know, a wooden bookcase or something like that. We don't necessarily have to do it in the scene. We can do it outside of the scene. We could build that bookcase or that brick wall somewhere else if we wanted to. You know, we don't absolutely have to always have it in the scene. And then we could import it later if we wanted to. You know, um, are you guys with me in, in Twitch? Let me check. Let me make sure. Go to my Twitch chat. Where are you? You guys are here. I think you're here. Looks like you're here. Video for screen light. Um, all right, we'll go over that too. Really quick, let's do some surface development stuff like I was saying, and then we'll move on to um, um, maybe doing some more lighting stuff. So uh, brick wall, stone wall, anybody have any strong opinion on this? I don't know. I feel like a, a stone wall might be a little more fun, but as always, we'd like to hit the three button. If we hit the three button, that happens. We don't want that, so add some edge loops. Yes. What about like a fluffy always, rug? Like the three button. Well, three what three about a what? Happens. Sorry. Or like a fluffy so floor or something. A fluffy floor, like a rug? You mean a rug? Maybe like a like a um, a shag carpet, perhaps. Yeah. Okay, we can do that too. We can try. Because I have one in my reference. Yeah, yeah. No, we can totally do it. It's yeah. just um, it's just one of those things where yeah. that's a little bit difficult because we traditionally would. We, yeah, we, yeah. No, we can totally do it. It's we could tradition. <laughs> There's so much echo. We could tradi We can do that, but um, it's difficult because we would want to use some kind of hair or fur technique, which is a little advanced. But I will um, I'll do my best. How about that? do something kind of interesting. So I'm making a stage at this point. And by that, I mean, you know, I'm not making an enclosed room. I probably should, given what we've been going over lately. But let's just do some stage lighting for right now, for the moment. OK, so I have a wall here. I'll go to textures.com, and I will stones. OK, awesome. That helps. So we'll do a stone wall, which I like better anyway. So whenever I go to textures.com, I try to look at their 3D scan materials or their PBR materials. This is typically the best stuff they have. The nice thing about using this, like if I go to rock or, ooh, look, medieval wall, right? So let's find a cool medieval wall. Open this up. Yeah, see, this looks really cool. So I don't know, cobblestone wall sounds pretty cool. I like this. That's what I would like to see. So ideally, we want to see this as our render in um, in Maya and Arnold. And you can really see this has a lot of depth to it. Like a lot of depth. Uh, it's so much depth, I would almost say um, it's good in this case to use a height map or displacement map. But that, again, is a little bit beyond the range of the class. Let's just work with what we have first. Ooh, we have this awesome ambient occlusion map, too. Such good stuff here. So use the 1024 by 1024. I mean, I guess if you want to pay money, you can go higher to a 2K, but I don't have time or money. So <laughs> I'm going to stick with the free stuff. Um, try to make this a relatively fast thing. I hope you have a folder for your textures. Make another folder. We're going to call this um, Stonewall. Put all of the textures here. They're TIFF, file, TIFF files. You should at least have your normal map here, which is the purple one, at the very least, and your color. And I say at the very least because you really should go for like the roughness map. Maybe these rocks are a little shiny. The roughness map is going to help you control how shiny the rocks are, control the specularity on the rocks. And I mean, um, for argument, actually, we haven't talked about ambient inclusion really uh, until now. So um, if you want to download that too, we can talk a little bit about why that might be useful. And I emphasize on might. 
I don't always use ambient occlusion, but it is nice to have. And I mean, since we're just since we're here, let's just get them all right. So height map is if you really want to use a displacement map, and that's really going to get you the the most depth. So I mean, this to me looks like there's displacement added because holy crap, look at how much depth we have. This is maybe more depth than the normal map can really give us. But let's see what happens. Let's see what we get. Also, I want to mention, of course, that we want to make a normal map in Photoshop. If I wanted to make a normal map out of this render, which seems dumb, but let's just say for argument's sake, then we could go to filter, don't forget 3D and generate normal map. We can also generate a height map or a bump map here, but that's your black and white map. And uh, generally we would like our normal map to look good before anything else. In other words, I don't want to have to fight with displacement, especially in this class because it's intro to 3D and displacement is a pretty intense, it's a visual effects thing. It's very rendering intensive, takes forever. And honestly, if we can get our normal map to look good, then I would just stick with that. Cool. So, hey, look, look at this. I'm using that render as a crazy bump map or normal map. And you can see it's definitely working. Um, should you do this? Well, definitely not with this render. This looks silly. But, but definitely for these rocks or the, the stone here, it looks great. So let's, let's make it work. All right. Um, this comes with UVs. So if you're, if you're using a primitive, all primitives come with UVs. <coughs> you can always double check that, or maybe you want to make better UVs. That's another option. In fact, you know what? Let's make better UVs. Um, it just depends on what, are we going to see the um, every side of the wall or not? I'm not sure. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Let's see what happens. If I make a new Lambert, just because I'm curious, um, if I throw the color on, and again, color is last, so you're probably saying, wait, what? You're breaking your own rule. And yeah, I am. I'm absolutely breaking my rule because I, I just want to see really quickly what the stones look like super fast on these UVs. You know, I just kind of want to test it. So under stone wall, albedo is color, just really fast. Hit the six button and okay, see, that's what I wanted to know. I can see why wow, it's super stretched, looks terrible. So you have a couple options here. You could tile it. So if we tiled it like four and four, maybe. That's actually not bad. That's one solution. It still feels kind of stretched to me, to be honest with you. And you can tile this to be whatever you think feels right to you. Um, but I do feel like I'm getting stretching. You know, to me, that just doesn't look great. Another option is just to make your own UVs. <clears throat> because, I mean, honestly, <clears throat> if you have, make your own UVs, then you're going to get a lot more control over this. And see all the stretching at the top here. So if we make UVs, we can try to automatic unwrap it with a box like this. It might actually give good results. And again, you can go in and fix your tiling. I don't like to depend on this though, because I mean, your automatic UVs might not look good. It's uh, it's kind of a, a crap shoot a little bit. Let's put our tiling back at three and three. And it looks kind of cool actually, except for the top. So this is again where our, our automatic UVs might not give us the best results as we look at the sides. I mean, if we don't see the sides, then I guess we can just say, I don't care. Um, and look, when I hit the three button, you can definitely see a lot of warping here. All right, so it's up to you. Um, let's say another way to do it instead of auto unwrapping, because auto unwrapping is lazy and auto unwrapping doesn't always give us good results. This is, by the way, what it looks like auto unwrapped. This isn't bad. I'm not going to lie. This is an example where auto unwrapping actually did a pretty good job. So I might just keep it. But let's pretend if we want to do it manually, like the correct way, um, we can see, does this line up with an axis? It looks like it lines up with the Z axis. If I'm looking down here at this widget, like it's Z is this direction. So if I wanted to make my own UVs, I could say um, base the UVs on a planar projection from the Z axis. 
like so, and click Apply. And see, now the UV projection is going just from this axis. And so this side of the wall looks great. You can actually see I can scale the projection, which is pretty cool over here. Um, the problem with that, of course, is I still have to unwrap the top and the sides and so on. So obviously, if I were to do it this way, then I would select these faces and I would project again from the other angle. So I again go to planar. This time it's going to be from the Y axis, click apply, right? And if you wanted to, again, you could stretch this out until you get the scale that you're looking for. That doesn't look bad, actually. Um, I'm not super hot, hot. I'm not, whoop, uh oh, undo. There we go. I'm not super happy about the, uh, the, the tiling right now, but that's basically your workflow, right? So now I can project another planar projection, but this time from X. So planar projection, but from X axis. Apply. And then that gives me the side, which obviously would scale not so great. So just scale out the projection until you like it. Kind of matches. See, now you're making it kind of seamless this way, which I think looks good. So apply. Oh, crap. I did it again. No, I want to keep it there. So if we kind of have this corner of the wall, I think that looks pretty good. And of course we can adjust this tiling. So if you want these stones to be smaller, it might just be a matter of uh, changing your tiling. So then go back to your place 2D texture node and decide, do you want this repeating twice or three times or what looks good to you? I kind of like two. I think that looks pretty good. I am getting a little bit of weird. Uh, it's not seamless when it goes around the top. So that's the one thing I'm not, not really happy about right now. Um, oh. Let me just go back and repeat this only one and one, one and one. Okay. And then if we look at, if we want this to, to wrap a little bit better, you know, we can go into our UVs and our UV editor and we could take these shells and move them around until, until they worked better. And what I mean by that is like, I don't want to spend too much time doing this, but you're probably like, hey, if auto unwrap works and it works well, then why are you doing this? Well, I'm just showing you if you wanted to do it by hand or manually. You know, this technically gives you more control. Because see, now I have these UV shells. Remember, shift right click. Oh, I'm sorry. Control right click to UV shell. That allows me to move this shell. But see the nice thing about this is I can put the shell basically right where they should line up. So this shift right click, did it again, control right click to UV shell. And the real question is, do I want this on the side? Or in other words, where does this line up? Take all of them. Remember, we want to scale all the shells together. Don't scale them separately. And make sure that it stays within the 0 to 1 space. All right. It's starting to look pretty good, except, of course, the tiling feels off. So we could still tile it again, maybe 2 and 2. But at least this gives you a nice visual representation of how this should wrap around. So now the stones, if you look carefully, you can see the stone is actually wrapping around completely. See how the stone is correct now. It lines up properly. So this is why doing it by hand is still better because the stones actually wrap properly from the side to the front of the wall. Anyway, that's why I don't like auto unwrap because see, I have a lot more control. And now we can tile it two and two. Again, using that... Um, Place 2D texture node, repeat U and V, 2 and 2. All right, I'm finally good with this. And that was all just so I could test my UVs, but it looks good. I know it's Lambert, but say now, now it looks pretty good, except, of course, when I hit the 3 button, I'm getting warping again. What, what can I do about that? Because I'd like to hit the 3 button. Well, don't use the 3 button. In this case, use what? Use Poly Smooth. If I go over to Poly Modeling and I use the Poly Smooth instead, bam, Poly Smooth, then look, 
Um, well, actually, I'm still getting warping. <laughs> What's up, my divisions? Hmm. Not great. Not great. So you're like, well, maybe Bevel, <laughs> after all. Maybe Bevel is what I want now. <laughs> um, yeah, hitting the three button is problematic. Polysmoothing is problematic. Man. Am I going to, like, actually use bevel? Really? Am I really going to do that after, like, lecturing you guys about how bevel is bad? <laughs> Man. Maybe I will. Control backspace to get rid of the edge loops. Um, so, yeah, we don't want these perfect 90-degree angles. Again, we don't want that. So we could bevel the whole object. I've already got my UVs made. If I bevel the whole object, then I guess I don't have to recreate. Ah, yeah, that is actually more what I want. Oh my god, I just contradicted myself yet again. I guess, I guess bevel is working pretty well here. As long as you make your UVs first, I think, is the key. But see, now I have these triangles, which normally I don't like. But since the UVs are done and they look pretty good, um, you know, I guess I'm beveling it. Go to mesh display, soften, edge. And that doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's not great, but it's, it's not bad either. Okay, we got to move on to more surface development, right? That's just all been UVs. Let's now move on to actually doing what we're supposed to do with the AI standard surface, right? So that I've been doing, I've been using a Lambert up until now, just, just, to check to see how the texture falls on there. That, I'm basically just checking to see how the texture falls on my UVs. Really what I want though is I want this AI standard surface. And I'm going to call this stone wall. Now fix your specularity first. Um, I don't really have much specularity on this stone wall. You could basically change this weight to zero if you wanted to and not worry about it at all. That's fine. However, I do have like a a roughness map. So, I mean, if we turn up the weight a little bit, not too much. Um, actually, where does your roughness... Oh, I'm in subsurface. Sorry. Wrong one. Go back to spec. Okay. So, where does your, your roughness map go? Well, it goes into the roughness attribute. So, let's see what we get. So, if you have a roughness map, plug it in at this point. This one. That's my roughness map. And that's just going to control again. Um, oh, I didn't apply it yet. I'm sorry. Still got that Lambert on there. Back to what we were doing. Let's get this on there. In other words, let's apply the material. Assign material to selection. Go back to it. Now again, turning up the weight on the roughness. We should start to see this in the viewport. You can actually alt. I don't, I don't really see the roughness map doing very much for me, so I'm not going to worry too much about this. Um, and if you don't see it in the viewport, it's not a big deal. We, what we really want to worry about mostly is the bump right now. So let's worry about that. And this isn't doing much for spec. So bump is under geometry. Go to geometry. This is what's really important. Go to bump mapping. And now feed in that normal map. But don't, don't forget, make sure that you use as tangent space normals. Now feed in the normal map. This is really what we want to check, most importantly. So get your normal map in there. It's purple. See, looks nice. We should see this in the viewport. Now, don't worry. Lighting, how can we check this? Also, our tiling is not right either, right? So what do we decide, the two and two? Let's put a light on here. I personally like to put a directional light, like the sun, and hit the seven button so that I can see it. How can I test this? Well, I can take this directional light and I can rotate it. And if I rotate it, you can totally see how it's working with a normal map. 
So that's a really good way to test your normal map. See how well it's working is just a rotated directional light and hit that seven button. And this is really what I want you to do for homework is basically try to get your normal map and your specular working. Most of all, most importantly, there's no color yet because that'll be due the next class. Let's close out of that. So anyway, back to our material, you can right click graph network if you'd like to see it. So this is my, my material, my stone wall. And then going into the normal map, this is the normal map here. Um, unfortunately, there's no real way to turn up the amount of uh, normal mapping. I mean, even if you turn up the bump depth here, it really doesn't do anything. I know it's showing that it changes in the preview, but honestly, I mean, it shouldn't uh, affect the, um, the render. So I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised that it, that it changes it so much in the viewport. It makes me want to render. Let's see what happens. I have to see if there's actually a change. Traditionally, your normal mapping depth cannot be changed this way. Traditionally, you can only do this if you're using a black and white bump map and not a normal map. But again, traditionally, maybe they fixed it. It's possible they fixed it. I don't know. Let's open up the interactive renderer. We can find out really quick. Oh, yeah. There it is. Cool. So wait, does this actually work? Let's see. Survey says, no, I think, as I said before, uh, play, has to actually be rendering. Yeah, see, so if I change my bump depth, it might change what you see here, and it might change what you see here, but note it does nothing in the render. Note, see? So no matter what I do to this bump depth slider, don't be fooled. This doesn't matter. Only what shows up in the render, that's the only thing that matters. So then, so the slider does nothing. I mean, I know it looks like it does because of this, but please don't make that mistake. It only works with a black and white map. And you can see again, the render shows that it's having no effect. Okay, I want to tile this. So if I want to tile it, I can go to my place 2D texture node and um, I can tile it from here. So double click my place 2D texture node and say like, I'll repeat it in UV twice. Come on, two and two. Two and two. Oh God, so slow Maya, what are you doing? Watch, it's gonna give me 22. What do you wanna bet? Oh my God, Maya, stop. Okay, this is what happens when your interactive renderer is left on. So click the, pause button or rather you know you got play and stop so click stop i told you it went to 22 i knew it so two and two here's a great tip guys i hope you're watching because this is a pretty good tip if you've got one of your place 2d texture nodes fixed and you're like oh no this is this is the good one this one is not good it's not fixed yet you can either go into this one and of course change the tiling or another option is you could actually do this Swap them, and now you're only using one 2D texture node. This one doesn't need to exist anymore. Oops. Yeah, you can just delete this now. Mm, or I'm wrong. Hmm. I know you can share these. I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> I'm like, yes, it can be done, but. All right, Charles. Whatever you say. <sighs> you should be able to share those nodes, but for the sake of time, let's just make them both two and two. All right. Now let's see what we have in the viewport. That looks nice. Um, let's turn the rendering back on. Hey, look, my homework's done. That wasn't hard. Oh, no. We, we want to actually add better lights, don't we? So, you know, you can now make a sky dome. Or, actually, let's do something different. Let's uh, delete both. Do something a little bit different. We're actually gonna use a sun and sky system. 
and then see how that works for our rendering. So this is a default sun and sky system. It's the unfortunate part, of course, is that you can't really see it in the viewport very well. Unfortunately. But look how nice it's looking here in the render. So got my sun and sky. Oh my ass stop freaking out on me. I hit the six button so I can actually see it here. Because this is still a dome, I can rotate it. So if I wanted to, I could rotate my sky dome. Select the sky dome and rotate. So that's one thing I could do. Oh man, everything's running really slow right now. Sorry. <clears throat> Come on, my wake up. Jeez, really running slow. Let's plug in the other. <sighs> How are you guys doing? Stones. Nobody's saying anything. Um, okay. Back to what I was saying. Take your AI Sky Dome, whether it's the Sun and Sky system or the HDR. I always prefer HDR, but you can ro rotate either one and hit play. Um, because, well, I just prefer the, uh, the HDR stuff. I'm sorry. I think it's better. It is. I, I swear. There is a Sun and Sky system. You can use it. Um, but if you want the best results, use an HDR. This one? Yeah, yeah, sure. So those are my, there's my HDR. And now look how much nicer this is going to look when I hit play. Cool, it's pink. Everything's pink. Um, <laughs> again, like I keep saying, whether it's your sun and sky system or whether it's your sky dome, you can always rotate it. So I would hit the stop button first so you're not rendering as this happens. But stop. Oh, not that. Rotate your sky dome. So like here, look how the sun is in the sky here. Do you want the sun behind the wall? You know, hold down shift, by the way, don't clone it, but you could have the sun behind the wall. That's going to give a significantly different result. So if I snapshot this, this is my little snapshot button, hit play again. See, now I kind of get the blue from the other side. Anyway, I'll leave this up to you, how you want to like have the sky dome rotated that's whoops hold down shift by the way so that you're not accidentally rotating it oh that cloned it don't clone it man there we go if you need to turn up your uh, exposure here you can or turn up your samples you can but this is about material development so i'm not going to um do that um, I'm going to worry more about the materials on the wall. Um, I've got my bump and spec kind of where I want it to be. I, I like it. It looks nice. Like, look, if I zoom into my render, it's looking pretty nice. So here, let me stop it and zoom in. But see, now the, the stone is looking pretty good. I think, I, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So that's basically what's due for homework is to get your specularity and your normal map and your bump map looking great um, and your lighting. So that's more or less what's due for homework. <clears throat> the next step, of course, is to throw color on there. So let's just pretend we'll skip ahead and we'll, we'll add color. Um, that's the last thing you do, as I keep saying. So if you're happy with your spec and you're happy with your <clears throat> bump, clap your hands. I mean, I mean, I mean, put your color in. Sorry. Bad joke, bad joke. I've had a lot of, had a lot of coffee. I don't know. So last thing you want to do, of course, is add your color. But only do this if you're happy with your normal map and your spec. But since you know, I'm kind of at that point in the demo, you might as well put them all in. So make sure you have a texture folder. Ideally, you have a folder for each object. Albedo is going to be your color. 
Um, what haven't I used? Oh, I guess I haven't used, um, <clears throat> the only thing I haven't used, of course, is uh, ambient occlusion. But give me one second. We've got to, again, change your place to be texture node. I mean, there is a way to use one node, so you're not constantly having to do this for each one, but let's just see how it looks. So color, give show me color. Nice. So last step, add color. I'm pretty happy with my stone wall at this point. Um, I need to ask you guys if you have questions because that's all the surface development that you need to do at this point, right? We could try to make a displacement map and, and fight with that. Um, but really for the purposes of this class, that's kind of overboard. It's just a little much. Um, here, let's get a render or resolution gate. This shows me what's actually good. Ah, damn it. Bracket, bracket. This is my resolution gate. So I know that's what I want to see in my render. Or that's what my render is going to show me. There we go. One more time. Play. Yeah. See? Resolution gate. And that's what I'm actually seeing. Um, who's got questions for me um, at all? Anybody? How are you guys feeling about this? Your ears. What did I do? Am I too loud? Am I coughing or something? <laughs> yeah, what? Your mic blows out occasionally, and it's really alarming. Ooh, sorry. Um, I guess I can turn my mic volume down. Hold on. Uh, yeah, my mic's kind of kind of high here. I'll turn it down. So yeah, okay. That should solve that problem. Is that a little better? That should be. Hopefully. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this wall, but. Let's uh let's push it a little farther by um, maybe temporarily turning the color off. We can do this a number of ways. We can disconnect it, just disconnect it that way. Now I have no more color. And then, oh god, what happened? Maya did not crash on me. I know you did not crash on me. Back to what I was saying. Um, no color is a good way to is a good way to check your your bump or your normal map or your spec, but make sure that you have some like we don't want black, right? Let's turn it back to gray, and now we can actually see this again. So let's say we would want to adjust our our spec a little bit. Like, I don't like this roughness map. Maybe it's not working for me. It's technically supposed to be perfect, but let's just pretend it's not. Right-click, break connection. And then your roughness is completely gone. Um, for something like a brick wall, we actually want something pretty high for roughness. Because, well, think about it. Um, concrete, brick, stone, it's all very rough. So I would just recommend just go ahead and crank the roughness up really high. If you have a roughness map, of course, that's the best thing that you can use. That's the, the most accurate thing, and that's what you want. But again, we're just kind of pretending that we don't, don't have a roughness map. Then you can play with this roughness. And the lower the roughness, the more metallic this is going to look. So if I use like a render region here, and we just sort of add a little render region, hit play, then we should get something right now that looks a lot shinier. Your, your, your bricks now with a very low, low roughness and a high specular weight should get you something that's more plastic or metallic looking. So yeah, the higher your specular weight and the lower your roughness, the more it should look sh like shiny metal or plastic. And so if you look carefully now, see I'm getting glints here on the rock, that's all my specularity. So if you want shinier rocks, maybe it just rained, or maybe the rocks are just simply shiny, then again, push up the specular intensity or specular weight and push down the roughness. 
Now, logically, you wouldn't want this. So again, logically, you would want rocks to be very high roughness, but I'm just show, kind of showing you the difference between them. Like, I'll even make the roughness com completely zero and the specular specularity really high. Now watch when we render this, it should be like very metallic looking or very plastic, which I feel like it is. I've turned, like, suddenly turned, turned these rocks into plastic rocks or metallic rocks. Um, anyway, again, for, <clears throat> for um, stone, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's, again, what your homework is. Like, your homework is to adjust your specularity and roughness, adjust your normal mapping, and once you, you have something you like, then, of course, for the next homework assignment, then we can um, plug our color in. But for this one, let's try to stick to bump and spec. Okay, do I still have color here? Yeah, I do. So if I take this out color and plug it into the base color there, That seems weird, like it didn't... I don't know, it's working. Looks pretty good. And I can move this around. It's a nice thing about the interactive renderer. And my wall is done! It's a little plasticky because again, I, um, I made the specular very, very shiny. So if we look closely at these uh, rocks now, they're kind of shiny rocks. Um, but I mean, I'll leave this up to you. Like again, if it's, uh, if, if they're meant to be shiny rocks, see if I zoom in, I got very shiny rocks. If you're like, no, that doesn't make any sense. If it just rained or if these rocks are made of plastic, then sure. But probably we want the opposite, right? Probably we want the roughness to go all the way up as opposed to all the way down. We want something that looks like stone. We don't want it to look like plastic, so my suggestion is to turn this roughness way up. And maybe pull down the specular weight. And this should be closer to real rock or real stone. Um, we can take a snapshot. Well, no, you can actually just see it. So this is the old one here. See how shiny the specular highlight is right here? Now we don't have that at all. This is much more accurate to real stone, um, so I'm much happier with this. But I just want you to understand, if something is plastic or made of metal, then playing with the specularity and roughness is very important to get that metallic or plastic look. For these rocks, though, or these stones, you would want to go the opposite direction. You want the roughness to go um, much, much higher. Because, hey, stones are rough. What a concept. Rocks are rough. What a concept. So, and lastly, again, if you have that roughness map, you could just plug that in. Just make sure you adjust your tiling if you're going to go that route. And I mean, maybe you're like, well, actually, the map isn't doing much for me. I don't like it. Then do whatever looks good. <laughs> Ultimately, that's all that matters. So just m make sure to tile everything. If it's two and two, you want to make sure the tiling always matches. All right. Um, and then I guess one last render. I really like that uh, interactive placement renderer stuff. Or to be specific, I really like the render region that I can drag around. It's pretty sweet. I like that a lot. You know, I'm just like, ah, I'll just drag it over here. See what this looks like. Or scale it out, for example. It's pretty nice. All right, I think this brick wall is pretty close to being done. Um, you might be wondering what the ambient occlusion is. Um, it's a hack. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't like to use it. So it's a hack that is not a very good hack. So I typically never use it. Um, do you guys want me to go over it though? Just since we have 10 minutes left and, um, you can at least see what it does or does anybody really care? <laughs> I don't know. I have no questions. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's good. Did, is the mic any better? I hope. Anybody know if the mic's any better at least? Somebody tell me that. 
Have you guys been getting a lot of um, blowout since I adjusted the levels? Because by adjusting the levels, that should fix that mic blowing out. So I hope it doesn't happen anymore. All right, I got to do this fast because, again, we're out of time. But just so you know what the ambient occlusion does, why it's useful. If I open up my color <clears throat> and my ambient occlusion, this is a hack. I repeat, a hack. It's not a good thing. I mean, it might be. But uh, typically, it's a it's like a hack that is a, an old hack. So really quick, I only have a few minutes left. Um, I want to show you why ambient occlusion might be useful. Note how deep and dark the shadows are. In the, um, I'm glad you are noting it, Charles. Just keep writing those notes. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. Anyway, pay no attention to the roommate or the cat. Okay, so if I, if I take the ambient occlusion and I drag and drop it on top of my color, I hold down shift to make sure that one drops onto it exactly on top. That way my ambient occlusion is directly on top of my color. Yes, directly on top, good. Now change the um, blending mode on my ambient occlusion layer from normal to multiply. Uh-huh. Pretty cool. Now the ambient occlusion has really made those cracks and crevices much, much, much darker. You maybe might be saying, well, what the hell, man? That looks great. And I'm like, yeah, I know. That's why it's a hack. And sometimes hacks work really well. But why it's bad is because do you really need the crevices and cracks to be that dark? I mean, this looks damn perfect. This is perfect. This is physically accurate. So if you're multiplying your ambient occlusion, you're making something that's no longer physically accurate. Does it look good? Arguably, yes. That's why we've used it as a hack all this time. Um, can we make it look even better? Yeah, we could either adjust the opacity on my ambient occlusion, for example, you know, and just add a little bit of shadow, or we could even adjust the levels. So check it out. If I hit Control L for levels, I could really make this super dark and super black. So that's why it's a hack. We're basically making the shadows do a lot more work. We're making the shadows much darker and deeper. And so if that's something you really want to do, then that's how you can do it using the ambient occlusion. Now we'll save out a new color map. I repeat, don't save over the old one. Just call this Albedo 2. And what's the difference? Actually, you know what? Let's call it AO because that's what we've done, right? We've, we've actually added ambient occlusion over top of it. And now if I go back into Maya, this is what the old one looked like, which is, again, physically accurate and what you prefer. But let's just say, okay, well, I really want the cracks and crevices in my stone to be, like, super, super dark. Um, that's fine. Last thing, I guess, is to swap out. This is the new one. As always, make sure that you're tiling... Two and two, but now let's look at the difference. We, get, we should get something that's much darker, whoops, much darker for our cracks and crevices between the stones. Yep, I would say that's uh, much darker. So that's why ambient occl occlusion comes in useful. It's a way to make your shadows much darker, as you can see here. I'll leave it up to you if you really need ambient occlusion. It's not technically physically accurate. It's a hack. So it's basically up to, up to you as an artist if you really want to use it or not. Um, I repeat, it's not accurate. But it definitely makes your shadows a lot darker. Um, I guess that's about it for the demo. I still have five minutes left in class so I can take questions. Or while I have this up on the screen and we're still going, do you guys have questions about any... Uh, it's not really the volume as much as the random eruptions of ear rape. <laughs> not sure what, what that means. I'm trying not to cough in your ear, so maybe that's it. I'm trying not to yell or be loud. I don't know. And I've turned down the mic levels, so I don't know what to tell you. It's weird. Um, but this is it. I, I've, I'm finished here. I personally think that the ambient occlusion is too dark, but again... It is a way for you to make something darker. So here's the difference. Look, if you toggle back and forth. This is the physically accurate one. Again, no ambient occlusion. The correct amount of darkness, in my opinion, in the uh, cracks and crevices. But if you're like, no, I want more cracks, cre dark, like more shadow in my cracks and crevices, then again, multiply your ambient occlusion in Photoshop, and you get that. I'll let you guys decide which is better for you. And I guess that's the end of the demo.